Dobar dan vsem skupaj. Jaz bom vaš današnji konferencije, vsaj za dopovdanski del. Ne bom imel, moje ime je Miha Kovač, če me kdo ne pozna, sem z te fakultete. Ne bom imel nikakršnih govorov, ker imamo zato bolj poklicane ljudi, tako da bi za začetek povabil najprej našega dekana, profesor dr. Romana Kuharja. Prosim. Cenjeni gostje, spoštovane kolegice in kolegi, drage študentke in študenti, dobrodošli na Filozofski fakulteti, kjer danes poteka zadnji dan desetega sejma akademske knjige Liberak, s katerim letos obeležujemo tudi desetkrat starejšo obletnico, to je stoletnica Univerze v Ljubljani in s tem tudi stoletnica Filozofske fakultete, ker je, kot veste, Filozofska fakulteta ena od ustanovnih članic naše Univerze. Stoletnica je seveda odlična priložnost za poglede nazaj in za nove začetke in med te zagotovo sodi ideja, ki sicer ni nova, ni pa še doživela dovolj spodbude, da bi bila uresničena. Govorim seveda o univerzitetni založbi. Po zgledu tujih tovrstnih založbi se ta imenovala University of Ljubljana Press. Združevanje založniških dejavnosti je smiselno uvajati postopoma in ob konsenzu vseh upletenih, hkrati pa je potrebno upoštevati tudi specifike posameznih založniških praks, ki se izvajajo na 26 fakultetah in akademijah Univerze v Ljubljani. Združevanjem založništva bi dobili močno založniško znamko, skupna znanstvena založba Univerze v Ljubljani pa bi predstavljala tretjo največjo založbo v Sloveniji po številu izdanih knjig na leto. Trenutno jih namreč izdamo skupaj skoraj da 300, največ prav na Filozofski fakulteti, kjer vsako leto izdamo skoraj da 70 novih naslovov. K temu je brško nepotrebno prišteti še znanstvene revije, ki jih izdajamo v univerzi. Na Filozofski fakulteti jih izdamo 24, na ostalih fakultetah in akademijah pa še dodatnih 22. Skratka, kot ugotavljajo avtori analize založniške dejavnosti na Univerzi v Ljubljani, publikacija je prav danes išla in če sem pravilno informiran, jo boste v kratkem dobili, citiram, argumenti zagotovo govorijo v prid združevanja založniške dejavnosti Univerze v Ljubljani, a k tovrstnemu projektu je treba pristopati postopoma, vse kakor tudi zmislijo na odprto znanost in transparentno znanstveno komuniciranje, nekaj o tem smo govorili na včerajšnji mednarodni konferenci. Pod skupnim imenom bi se založništvo Univerze v Ljubljani lažje predstavljalo v mednarodnem prostoru in hitreje je povezovalo v mednarodna založniška združenja in bibliografske baze, s čimer bi naši raziskovalci pa tudi sama Univerza pridobili večji ugled. Konec citata. Ne nazadnje je sveda zgovorno tudi dejstvo, da zgolj vsega, Ljubljanska univerza ni ima svoje enotne založbe in stoletnica je morda res krajnji čas, da se to zgodi. Dovolite, da med nami pozdravim še goste iz Stojine, their distinguished guests from Lithuania, UK and Croatia. Welcome to the Faculty of Arts, welcome to the 10th edition of the Academic Book Fair Liberak. This, university, this year, University of Ljubljana celebrates its 100th anniversary, and so does the Faculty of Arts as one of its founding members. The idea to establish University of Ljubljana Press is not new, and maybe this year, when we are 100 years old, the time is right to take this step. 26 faculties and uh, academies of the University of Ljubljana publish nearly 300 books each year. If we manage to join and unite all these publishing units of the faculties and academies, the University of Ljubljana Press would be the third largest publishing house in Slovenia and as such more recognizable also in the international context. So we are looking forward to learn from your experiences. Our program of celebration for this year is quite ambitious. We decided to organize 100 events to celebrate the 100th anniversary of the Faculty of Arts. 
I know we have exaggerated a little bit, but we will reach this goal. And I'm telling you all this because the next international conference organized by the Faculty of Arts starts in five minutes in the fifth floor, and I have to open that conference as well. So I do apologize that I have to leave immediately, but like Arnold Schwarzenegger, I'll be back soon. <laughs> So I wish you uh, a pleasant international conference and a pleasant stay in Ljubljana. Thank you very much. It's nice to hear to have a Terminator for a boss. Naslednji govornik pa bo prorektor Buštjan Bota Skenda, ki je na nek način tudi duša in telo ideje o univerzitetni založbi. Hvala, Miha. Spoštovani, vsi prisotni, dear distinguished guests, very welcome. Ja, hvala za to najavo. Res je, da sem se slučajno znajdu v vlogi nekoga v tem, lahko rečem, v tem obdobju, ko je zrelost ideje, ki prihaja že poče desetletje nazaj in več, seveda. Jaz mislim, da v glavah vseh je to neka logična posledica tega, kar počnemo tukaj na univerzi. Stoletnica je, seveda, čestitam fakulteti, filozofski fakulteti za neverjeten program, ki ne smem reči, da se kosa celotni univerzitetni programski schemi praznovanja stoletnice, ampak samo to dopolnjuje in dviguje vgled in vedenje, kaj pravzaprav je pomen univerzitetne založbe, pardon, univerzitetnega delovanja v sodobni družbi. Ena od seveda močnih predispozicij, da lahko razmišljamo o o založbi, o zbirki, o novih programih, o vseh vsebinah, ki so pred nami, je seveda izhodišče, da univerza naj združuje posamezne stroke, da se obrača na vznoter močno in gleda eden drugega in na vzven povezuje z različnimi akteri, ki pripadajo tem strokam, ki pripadajo osebinam, ki so povezane z našim poslanstvom, izobraževanjem in seveda razvojem, razvojem strok, v katerih delujemo. In to je bila tudi ideja, osnovno načelo praznovanja stoletnice. Pred nami je seveda še ogromno dogodkov in tja do junija 2020 Računam, da se bomo do dobra predstavili in javnosti in seveda dal močno sporočilo. Kot grafični oblikovalec oziroma oblikovalec knjig, predvsem, to je tudi moja osnovna profesija, sem prač založniški grafik in vem, da je založba nekaj, kar je mogoče en tak da je tako vozlišče dobrega, dobrega, vozlišče v sistemu dobrega produkta. Namreč, smatram, da je knjiga produkt. Knjiga je skozi oči grafičnega oblikovalca, je seveda to materializacija nekega zgodovinskega zapisa ali pa zapisa spomina, kakorkoli bi temu lahko to rekli. In seveda, da smo mi tisti ki naj bi bili prvi bralci, ki naj bi v redakciji uspeli razumeti vsebine in jih potem transformirati v to fizičnost, ne glede na to, ali je to na spletu, ali je to res na papirju, je tisto, kar je potem, bomo rekli temu, prevod ali pa neka koda, ki jo za nami, ki jo z nami vred, berejo vsi tisti, ki to rabijo jih zanima ali pa slučajno srečajo. Torej, vloga založništva danes ni zgolj neka forma produkcije, 
zato, ker je edina, edina možna, ampak je to uh, pomembna, pomembno uh, ali pa temeljno, temeljna točka, kako te stroke povezati med sabo, kako združevati osebine in jih transformirati naprej. Zato smatram, da je založništvo na Univerzi v Ljubljani kljub temu, da ima močno tradicijo uh, razpršeno, kar ne pomeni, da uh, ga ni moč kakovostno tudi začeti povezvati. Se je najbrž se. Rezultati, če ne drugač, so veliki že pri osnovnih potezah. Lansko leto smo nastopili skupaj na knjižnem sejmu, slovenskem knjižnem sejmu. Pokazali se je, da je, da je interes velik. Mislim, da letosni, letošnji liberak kaže na to, da enotnost je v predznaku celotnega sistema Univerza v Ljubljani na področju založništva. Tako da dejmo to zagrabiti, dejmo pametno korake naprej pelati in bomo veliki akteri za naprej. Hvala lepa. So, as we settled all our local issues now, I'll switch entirely to English for the next half of the, next part of the conference. Uh, I'm quite, I'm very happy that we have four very interesting speakers today from different parts of the world. Uh, we invited two speakers from United Kingdom because regardless Brexit, uh, UK still remains a kind of a gold standard for quality academic and trade publishing. Uh, but on the other hand, uh, we who live in the backyard of Europe and who speak a very, very small language face entirely different problems when we publish uh, academic and research, uh, research stuff both in our language and in English. So invited, we invited also two colleagues from two countries which are quite similar to Slovenia, not only in size, but also in many strange habits which we have. Uh, one speaker from Croatia and one speaker from Lithuania. And for the start, I'd like to invite uh, Professor Arunas Gudenevičius from uh, University of Vilnius to take floor. Uh, Arunas is a professor at a School for Information and uh, for Information and Book Studies in Vilnius, but he also for how, many, how long time? Two, last two years. Last two years. Last two years he runs Vilnius University Press, and we asked him to to uh, uh, give us a lecture on the issues which he's facing and how he runs his business. Please, Arunas, the floor is yours. Hello, everybody. It's uh, very nice to, to be here, and uh, thank you very much uh, for invitation to to participate in this event. It's it's an honor. It's an honor to me. Uh, so I was invited to share my experiences in uh, Vilnius University Press. As Michal Kovac just said, uh, I'm here for two years. So I already know things, uh, and uh, I, I think I ca can share with you uh, maybe a few sentences on my on my background. Uh, it will maybe be better for, for you to understand uh, why I'm here. I, my education is from engineering, not from faculty of. Uh, not from social sciences, but from engineering, so I, IT specialists. Uh, I worked uh, 10 years in the multimedia publishing business in private sector. And later on, I worked uh, four years in geographical information system company, private company. When decided uh, to do my PhD, after 10 years in business, did my PhD in Faculty of Communication, and later on I took over with uh, Vilnius University Press. So that's the background, and I would start with uh, some history. Uh, we are proud uh, to have a long history. Our Vilnius Academy Press was founded in uh, 1575. It means it was founded uh, four years before the Vilnius University. 
So we are proud uh, of this also. Uh, this year we had uh, 440 years in anniversary of Vilnius University. So we are older. Uh, but you know, the history of Lithuania and of Vilnius University also is complicated. Uh, uh, Vilnius Academy Press was sold to private citizen Josep Zawatskis in, in the beginning of 19th century. But he still was uh, printing books for Vilnius University. So this Academy Press uh, for more than 200 years was the one from two or three main presses in the Grand Duchy of Lithuania. It was a quite a huge country in 16th, 17th century. Uh, but Vilnius University was closed in the end of 19th century by the uh, Tsar of Russian Empire. And uh, Academy Press still managed to exist and run by Josep Zawatskis till 1940 when Soviets came. When Soviets came, everything was uh, destroyed, including and, uh, this Academy Press. Uh, the history of modern times, uh, after regaining our independence in 1990, uh, in our university, some uh, publishing unit was formed. Few persons, and they started some publishing books, textbooks, and so on. Uh, after seven years, uh, it was uh, reorganized into separate legal entity as a limited liability company owned by Vilnius University Press. It's like a private business, just the owner was Vilnius University. After six years, they changed the status of this legal entity to public institution. I'm not sure you have, but I believe you have some different types of legal entities in Slovenia also. Uh, in 2011, they were organized back into publishing department to Vilnius University. And in 2017, it was uh, the final one reorganization, at least for the time being, uh, uh, as subdivision of uh, Vilnius University. So I, I started to, to work after this reorganization. I, participated in this uh, organization also. And who knows when is the next organization? Uh, uh, some uh, explanation uh, where we are at the structure of Vilnius University. Vilnius University consists uh, with uh, 14 faculties. You have schools. Uh, or, 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 as I know. So you have more faculties to compare with Vilnius University. Also, we, we have a huge central administration with uh, 18 departments, you know, like finance department, like uh, library and so on. And we have uh, 12 non-academic subdivisions and one of these 12 subdivisions uh, and uh, is Vilnius University Press. And we have 20,000 students to compare with, with your university. Uh, structure of the Vilnius University Press. Here you can see. Uh, it's me, like managing director. And we have a publishing committee. It's uh, six person, uh, delegated from the Senate, from some uh, professors related to publishing business in order to supervise our university press. The chair of this publishing committee is vice rector for science. Uh, me, per, uh, also, I am a part of this uh, publishing committee as a managing director. 
Uh, my bosses, uh, I have two bosses. Uh, it's uh, vice rector for science and uh, chancellor. Uh, when it comes to you know, political issues on publishing, so it's uh, vice rector for science. And when it comes to this uh, funding and you know, some not, not uh, political issues, it's chancellor. Uh, the structure inside uh, press, uh, we have uh, 17 persons, 17 employees, uh, 16 full-time equivalent. Uh, three main employees are sales manager, uh, who is responsible for sales, for books, for rights, selling, also for communication with readers, advertisement, and so on. Uh, he has in his team warehouse manager and accountant, two persons. Uh, pro project manager is also important person uh, who leads the projects. Project, I mean, when we have a manuscript it's, and we need to publish it, it we, I call it project. And uh, the head of scholarly journals, uh, this person is resp responsible on publishing uh, our scholarly journals. Uh, in his team, he has administrator of scholarly journals. This person is administrating open journal system. He's uploading articles and doing some maintenance on, on this system. Also, we have graphic designer, three layout designers, actually two. I don't know why it's written three. Uh, four language editors and English language, language, language editor. Also, we time to time are hiring some uh, freelancers, uh, language editors and uh, designers and loud designers when, you know, before Christmas, everybody wants uh, to publish their book. Uh, we are lack of uh, resources, so we need to, to hire some persons. Uh, also, we have administrator. She manages uh, PhD thesis, uh, publishing of PhD thesis. Also, and she, all the office she's managing, uh, supplying some paper and so on, like traditional administrator of the office. Uh, one uh, position we do not have yet. We did not have it uh, from 1990s. It's an editor-in-chief. Somehow we are managing to survive without that position, but I believe we, we need uh, this position. So I hope next year we will have 18 employees with editor-in-chief. Our production. Uh, we are pro producing about 50, 17 books per year. Uh, about 40 volumes of scientific journals. We have around 30 different journals. And 150 dissertations. So to compare with uh, Ljubljana University Press, we are much smaller, so you would be a much bigger press. Uh, talking about the uh, genres of the books we are publishing, uh, you can see the numbers below. It's run, in 2018, it was uh, 21 monograph. It was two sets of peer-reviewed article, uh, 23 textbooks, and uh, 12, some references, directors, atlases, some another type of books. Also, 
usually we have around 10 conference proceedings published also. Fund funding. Uh, most, uh, I would say, about 50% of funding uh, are coming from university budget. It means uh, government are funding the university, and we have some uh, lines in university bu budget. So around 50% of this money coming from university. Uh, Around 40% uh, money are coming from Research Council of Lithuania. Scientists are submitting some scientific projects and an output uh, is planned, usually some articles or some monographs. And ex expenses are covered by Research Council of Lithuania. Also, we have uh, Lithuanian Council for Culture, uh, but uh, I don't know, maybe two or three percent of the budgets are coming from this uh, council because it's difficult uh, to compete with uh, all the market, uh, all the publishers from trade publishing also are submitting uh, proposals to this council. And we are giving money more to literature, not to academic uh, books. And Lit Lithuanian Academy of Sciences, uh, they are supporting uh, publishing of scientific journals. So five to six percent of our budget comes from Lithuanian Academy of Science. And of course, the budget is not enough. It's, uh, we are trying to collect more and more money, but you know, maybe you have the same issues. Uh, I believe money not not enough uh, always. Uh, uh, we have uh, open access open access policy established in our university to peer-reviewed review, journals. All our peer-reviewed journals are under this Creative Commons Attributions License. So they are published as open access and everybody can reuse them. But books and other publications is, is, are still copyrighted uh, following Vilnius University intellectual property policy. Uh, also, we are thinking about uh, possibility to make open access and for the books, but uh, no decision is made uh, yet about that. Marketing. Uh, we started to do s uh, first steps of marketing just last year because until 2017 it was no any marketing in Vilnius University Press. So we are not uh, very professional at that, but we are trying to learn and making some small steps into, we are doing some you know, posts uh, on Facebook, some paid posts on Facebook also. Uh, we have a news portal of Vilnius University. We are presenting each book in this portal. We are sending newsletters to libraries and to bookstores. We are doing uh, book presentations. Uh, on the Vilnius Book Fair, we usually have around 10, 15 book presentations in, in, in four days. And in the rest of the year, also we usually have our ten, one presentation per, per month, I would say, for monographs mostly. And we are working on our own uh, internet bookstore, because now we don't sell 
books uh, as uh, as press where we have some agreements with bookshops internet bookshops and uh, physical bookshops but we believe that uh, having uh, internet bookstore our own internet bookstore will help us uh, to increase sales and to get maybe more money uh, of course it's a good uh, marketing uh, is uh, Christmas cards. Uh, we, we tried it twice uh, when you are sending uh, Christmas card to all our academic staff of university. Uh, later on, in maybe two weeks' time, so you, you are receiving a lot of uh, questions. Oh, I have a manuscript. I, I, I want to publish. I f forgot it. Uh, it's uh, good uh, to, to remember you and a lot of uh, academic uh, professors are uh, coming after this Christmas uh, card. Now, this uh, last year Christmas card is very simple, a lot of uh, book titles and uh, everybody is happy to find uh, his own book title in this uh, Christmas card. Uh, uh, we are proud. Uh, we won a few awards uh, last year. Uh, we each year we have uh, awards uh, on uh, best design of uh, books uh, in few categories, and our category is of course academic books and textbooks category. This award is given by uh, Ministry of Culture of the Republic of Lithuania. So we got an uh, award for the best design in 2017 and 2018. Uh, but we don't, do not have any award for the uh, content of the books. So. But we are proud and for to, to have awards uh, on the cover of the book, or on the design of la layout also. It's because uh, from uh, 1990, it was um, uh, very little efforts uh, dedicated to the design of our university books. And uh, most of the authors were very unhappy with that. And uh, they were trying to publish their books uh, outside the Vilnius University. And one of the reasons was uh, very not interesting design, according to them. So it's just one reason to keep the authors in university. But if you do nice design for them, they are quite happy. Uh, book distribution. It's also quite an issue. It's expensive to, to dis dis distribute books. Uh, we almost do not have any wholesaler uh, who would collect your books and uh, distribute to, to Lithuania. We have uh, ourselves to distribute uh, our books to all the bookstores. So you can imagine if you want to have uh, your book on sale, for example, in Klaipeda, in three, 300 kilometers from Vilnius, you have to send it by post. The price increases. And if nobody buys this book, this book returning back, more, more money is spent. So it's expensive, this, this distribution of books. So mostly our brick and mortal bookstores, it's not our, but our partners, we, we have agreements, are in Vilnius. We have maybe 10 or 15 places. Everybody can find uh, Vilnius University Press books in Vilnius. We have a few bookstores in Kaunas. It's the second uh, largest city in Lithuania. And we are working with uh, the largest internet uh, 
bookshops of Lithuania. Also, we started to sell books on Amazon UK. Uh, just few titles sold. Uh, we started maybe six months uh, ago with uh, two or three titles. And uh, we don't do any advertisement. Uh, so, you know, on Amazon you can file five or six million titles. So it's lost between them. But still, I think it's, it's good for, uh, for the Google because when somebody's uh, searching some title, the uh, results from Amazon is usually on the uh, first lines. Uh, of a good Google search results, so it's worth to have, even <laughs> if the books are not sold. It costs nothing uh, just to have uh, on the Amazon bookstore. Uh, also, we have some uh, electronic books on Kindle store. Also, not very popular, but who knows later. Maybe we'll start to do some advertisement on, on them also. Technologies we are using in press. Uh, so for scientific uh, journals, we have uh, Open Journal System Free, the latest version of the platform. We are quite happy with it. Uh, before transiting uh, from version 2 to version 3, we did some uh, research uh, and uh, we were thinking about to, to buy some uh, commercial product of this uh, hosting platform. But uh, we counted the budget again and it was uh, much more, less money to have open journal system free because we have our internet uh, services, uh, IT services department in our university. So we are using these programmers to fix this open journal system for us. Of course, we are not happy on the, the speed we are doing it. Uh, it's not the main information system of the university, so it's uh, always in the second or in third not the first in the schedule. Uh, for design and for layouts, we're using Adobe products, licensed for university. Also, it's quite expensive, even for academic institution. We're using some uh, standards in our daily life. Uh, it's like ICO standards, cover pages. Uh, we are using publication ethics standards with Scope, YesBan, of course, DOI. We are using OJS workflow for su submitting peer re reviewing journals. Creative Commons, I already mentioned. Uh, we are publishing in, in PDF, HTML formats our uh, journals, our articles, and books. Uh, we are also publishing in EPUB format. <coughs> uh, also, we have to keep some standards uh, regarding our uh, official language, Lithuanian <laughs> language, and ci citation styles. Uh, we are members of some associations, uh, Lithuanian Publishers Associations, the main association of uh, publishers in Lithuania. Also, we have smaller one, Association of Lithuanian Academic Publishers. And we have Association of Lithuanian Serials. Uh, it, uh, serials, I mean uh, scholarly journals, uh, publishers of scholarly journals. So these three associations in Lithuania. And uh, we are members just uh, starting 2017, the end of 2017 of Association of European University Presses and uh, Crossref 
and I for OC actually I don't know what this, this is I have to ask my <laughs> the head of scholarly journals uh, what this association is about uh, but I believe it's also important <laughs> Yeah, and my time is finished, so if you have any questions, you can ask me later. Well, actually, we have time for one question, if somebody wants to ask one question. Yeah, they actually have three. Well, you, should, you need to squeeze them into one, no, but no, sure. I think that they are, uh, I think that they are um, interesting also for other public. Uh, I'm Damiana Kisovas from National Library, and I would like to know how much um, academic publishers are in uh, Lithuania. You said that you are a member of... Uh, 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 all academic publishers in Lithuania are from universities also, and... And how I many universities do you have in we Lithuania? Have it's uh, this number we're trying to decrease uh, the number of universities, but I, I, I believe we still have more than 10 universities, maybe 14 uh, it's government universities. Okay. So almost each university has more or less uh, department or some press in it. Okay, thank you. Um, and how many publishers are in general in Lithuania? I mean, not uh, an academic. Yeah. Uh, according to ISBN uh, agency, we have about 500 publishers. Mm -hmm. But of course, uh, the real uh, active publishers, uh, maybe 30, 40. Mm -hmm. And uh, our I mean, so university press are in top 10, if we counting the titles, the number of titles produced. Mm -hmm. So we are on eight in 2018, according to titles, not to money. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Definitely according to titles. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. And how many titles of monograph publication do you uh, issue in Lithuania per year? If in, you know in the all presses? Yes. In, in, it's a difficult question. I'm not sure. Okay. It could be 100 or more, 150. If we are producing 20 per year, so we are largest university, the largest academical publisher in Baltic states, and I think in Lithuania we could produce 100, 150 monographs per year. But just university publishers? Uh, some of our professors and other scientists are publishing their monographs in private uh, mm -hmm. publishing houses. A lot of reasons why, but yeah, we're trying to be good as we can good in order they w would want to publish in our university. She wants to know how many titles per year are published in Lithuania. As a whole, as a country, as a whole not market. 3,572. Mika knows the best. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> okay, S thank you, Arunas. Uh, Our next speaker is Jamie Biggins. She's coming from University College uh, London Press, which is actually a small academic press in comparison to Oxford University Press and Cambridge University Press, but it's very innovative and vibrant. So I'm very happy to have you here. Please, the floor is yours. Hi, everyone. So why was UCL Press set up? So here we have a quote from Professor David Price. He says UCL is committed to being a force for good. This includes ensuring that the products of its research are made as widely available as possible. So we were set up as an open access press right from the beginning and maximum dissemination of research is central to our mission. So we launched in 2015. Since then we've published more than 100 books and journals. We publish 35 books a year, and this will increase to 50 books next year. We have a UCL Press board, 
and a UCL Press exec, which focuses on proposals and peer reviews. All of our books and journals are peer reviewed. We fund UCL authors. Non-UCL authors have to pay a book processing charge, which starts at £5,000, and this covers the production costs. We are subsidised by UCL. We gain income from print sales and book processing charges, among other things. So our goal is wide dissemination of books and journals via open access. This is in comparison to traditional um, academic publishers that typically only sell 200, 300 copies of a monograph. Our books can be downloaded all over the world for free. We publish both UCL and non-UCL authors. Academics from UCL can publish wherever they want. They don't have to um, publish with us. Non-UCL authors pay a book processing charge. Here's our staff org chart. So there's 10 of us. We're all from publishing backgrounds. We publish in all these formats, so print and online, free versions and commercial versions. So we sell print copies. The open access PDF is our core open access output. This can be downloaded from our websites. So we upload our files to a number of platforms, including Google Books, JSTOR, OAPEN, and since launch, we've had over 2 million downloads across 230 countries. Here's our most accessed titles. The top three are all from a social media series called Why We Post, written by anthropologists at UCL. Book accesses by platform. The largest one here is JSTOR. JSTOR chunk our content by chapter level. And then next we have UCL Discovery. This is UCL's online repository. So global reach, top here is United States, followed by UK. Print sales, so we've got UK first, followed by North America and Europe. We continuously get nice author feedback and very positive about open access and the power of open access publishing and the fact that authors' books can be downloaded all over the world and the global reach they can achieve. We're open to all academic disciplines at UCL Press. However, these are some of our most popular subject areas so far. We've also moved into the textbook market. So we believe the current textbook market is flawed. There's high prices, frequent new additions. It makes textbooks unaffordable to students. So UCL has a strong strategic commitment to improving student resources and opportunities. So we took part in a project called the JISC Institution as e-textbook publisher. JISC is a UK government body. They funded us to produce two e-textbooks. The aim was to understand how we could stack up against a commercial academic publisher. Oh, sorry. <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> um, so here, here are the two textbooks we produced as a result of this project. One in plastic surgery and one in public archaeology and the number of downloads since publication are also there. So we're keen to grow our textbook publishing program. We've published three textbooks so far and here's a list of our forthcoming ones that we've contracted. We also publish academic journals. Here are some of the covers of these journals here. They're all at various frequencies and um, different publishing models. Some are continuous, um, some are more uh, annual-based journals. So we launched a mega journal um, earlier this year. This is an open and transparent, open peer review journal. So it's quite exciting for us. The first one is open, UCL Open Environment, which <laughs> features environment-led research. The mega journal is open for submission, so the first stage is an academic post to a preprint server. Here their article undergoes open peer review. If accepted, it's then published. This is a fast um, publishing route, so it enables immediate, immediate publication really on the preprint server. And it ties into the open science agenda. Everything is open and transparent. <coughs> 
So as before, we cover UCL authors. Non-UCL authors pay an article processing charge, which is detailed here. We um, help student journals by hosting them on the OJS platform. So we leave them to deal with the journals themselves. They do all editorial and production processes. We just advise on the platform and offer support. We also have a digital platform which features HTML uh, versions of our books. So we have books with embedded audio, video content, scholarly tools. We also have a product called Book, which stands for Books as Open Online Content. This is a dynamic publishing model. We've published one, and we're publishing a second on medicine later this year. So here, content can be added over time. It's quite a fluid, dynamic model. We do quite normal, traditional marketing activity, social media. We have a website. We send metadata, Onyx feeds to key partners. Um, we have a UCL Press catalog. We go to conferences, we have book launch events. So all things you would expect from a scholarly publisher. We also offer publishing services and consultancy. This is where we offer advice to publishers on how they can set up their own press. So we can either come to you or you could come to us for services. Or we also offer actually a full suite of services. So the first publishing partner to partner with us is DCU Press, Dublin City University, who signed with us last year. So there'll be more information to come on that. Thank you. I'm happy to take questions. <laughs> uh, we have time for two questions, actually. Uh, so who wants? Please. Um, Samo the uh, yeah. Uh, thank you very much for your very b quick presentation. I do hope that I understand you correctly about the business model and I, I would ask you to elaborate a bit more on the financial model. Uh, do I understand you correctly that GISC is a major funder for textbooks in your uh, uh, publishing house? But what about other monographs? Are they published uh, according to... I, I know that they are disseminated by under the Creative Com Common Licenses, I understand. Yes, um, GISC was a one-off project, so that was one of um, the project. a four-year project where we had funding along with three other institutions. So, so can you elaborate a bit about the business model behind the Open Access yeah. Publishing House? Um, Thank so you. We're funded by UCL Press research budget, um, so, sorry, by UCL's research budget. So um, they wanted their own academic press, so they funded a, a press and employed us all to fulfill that mission. Um, so all of our funding comes from within UCL. Um, we charge for print versions, but otherwise we don't make any income, apart from uh, you know, a few other things like publishing services, or, but income is minimal. So we're um, open access 100% and funded by the university. So that, uh, that was the decision of the university to provide the financing for the open access? That's correct. Thank you. Yes. Yeah. Hello, my name is Dunja Liegat. I'm coming from University of Maribor Press. Uh, something similar I wish to ask as uh, Miriam. But do you have some feeling how frequently uh, people decide to buy a version of the book, although it is open access? Yeah, we've actually been quite surprised by our print sales because even though there is an open access version, some people still like the print. So especially our, even our authors like to get a print copy. Um, so um, print sales are actually quite quite good for us. Um, you know, we sell maybe around 200 copies um, of our books. A significant uh, <laughs> amount of money, perhaps, for you or not? Uh, it's, it's, in the, it's not really very significant, but it does help as some in income stream. Yeah. Thank you. Sure. Hi, my name is Tina. Uh, I'm from the Nova Universa. Basically, what I'm interested in is that you mentioned print sales as one sort of income, but you very quickly managed you do some other things as well. Is this more publishing orientated, more design orientated? Um, well, we have the publishing services where we offer consultancy and services. So that's another income stream for us. Um, we do charge for those services. Um, so we've got that, the print sales. Um, what else have we got? 
the book processing charges, article processing charges. Um, so they're, they're the main main, mainly from authors who wish to publish in your publishing house. Mm. Yes, okay. correct. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you. We will move to our next speaker. Our next speaker is actually our neighbor coming from Croatia. Uh, proof. Uh? Oh, okay, you next. Yeah, he's next. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> You're the last one. Yeah. Uh, Zoran Velagic is professor of book history at publishing studies at the University of Osijek. And he's an old and established researcher in the field of publishing, both internationally and in Croatia. Please, Zoran, the floor is yours. Thank you uh, for inviting me here to share the experiences which are a little bit different compared to, for example, uh, Vilnius, as we don't have any um, uh, university press uh, departments. Uh, you'll notice immediately that uh, we much more remind of guerrilla publishing um, uh, than, than some uh, established publishing enterprise. Uh, we are a very small university uh, and uh, we are periphery of Croatian periphery. So not just a uh, European periphery as you mentioned for our I hope three countries or two countries, whatever you consider to be European periphery. It's much more. It's much more. Okay, uh, but uh, we are really we are really at the periphery of what's going on in Croatia um, uh, as well. Uh, so um, uh, I like to uh, say a few things about the um, uh, uh, ambient of publishing in Croatia, about some general figures. Uh, then uh, I would like to say a little bit uh, more about um, uh, subsidies to publishing. Uh, as I don't know how is it in, 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 in your countries, uh, but in Croatia um, uh, almost all the academic uh, publishing is uh, supply model publishing. Uh, so um, in fact you don't sell academic books. Um, uh, you publish academic books if you already uh, have some um, uh, budget to produce them. And then a few words about the um, uh, publishing at the University of Osijek and uh, a little bit more about the uh, publishing at the faculties of humanities and social sciences. I noticed it and it, it, it seems quite interesting to me. We are all in fact faculties of philosophy, philosophical facultet, and we are also philosophical facultet in Osijek. Uh, but you opted for the faculty of arts and we in Croatia all opted for the, faculty, for the faculties of humanities and social sciences. I don't know uh, why did they decide to. Hmm? Your translation is more understandable than ours. <laughs> 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 oh, okay, what about them? So from the uh, bibliographical um, uh, office of the National um, uh, Library of Croatia, uh, we received the data <coughs> about Croatian book production uh, in last um, uh, 10 years. Um, uh, so here you see the uh, general uh, book output. Uh, it's not big, but it's, it's, it's not um, uh, small. Uh, it's about um, uh, 7,000 titles um, uh, we publish every year. Uh, you can see um, uh, that we have a small number of first editions. Uh, but the reprints um, are making really the, uh, so the uh, back end is making really um, um, the biggest number um, of um, uh, publishing. Uh, when we compare original language, uh, then you also see that the, almost the half um, of our productions are translations and the half is coming from the uh, original creation. Uh, and uh, yeah, last, what I have is, um, uh, I call it publishing quilts, uh, because we don't have um, exactly the categories. Um, uh, we um, uh, receive the, the data, uh, how many textbooks are published, um, uh, how many uh, literature. So here are the textbook, here, here is the literature and then the other. Uh, so we would be interested in the other uh, as um, uh, academic um, uh, books um, uh, belong to the other. And there is a promise uh, that we have detailed categorization of the complete output in um, uh, one year perhaps. Um, uh, and um, uh, it's also a problem for us who are doing publishing research because if you want 
data such this there's still not um, there is no any database in Croatia with, with 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 such a data so you really have to write a letter to to, to a guy in 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 a bibliographical department and ask him oh my friend um, you know I'm traveling to the conference would you be so nice and uh, send me the data about um, uh, uh, and of course they're going to send the data um, uh, but you know you know when 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 someone from abroad is doing a research and is interesting in as you ask uh, for for Lithuania yeah, of course. Um, uh, in, in in total book output, um, uh, then um, uh, such data should be should be uh, should be. Um, uh, I'm not criticizing. I'm just thinking aloud. Okay, okay. Uh, so the the next one is um, uh, perhaps uh, usual, but a little bit shocking for me. Uh, it's about subsid subsidizes. Uh, I have an amazing uh, doctoral student um, uh, from the University of Rijeka. Uh, who did a very uh, nice analyze of the numbers. Uh, both Ministry of Science and Ministry of Culture in Croatia are subsidizing uh, book production, and all the data are publicly available, but just as a number. Um, and we did um, a very careful analyze uh, who receives the subsidies, because from these data, uh, we can reconstruct who are the academic publishers. As I told you, um, uh, academic publishing in Croatia is really a supply-based model. Um, uh, so usually um, uh, the commer commercial publisher um, uh, and also the uh, institutional publishing publishers would, would say you, um, uh, if you, if you, if you bring the manuscript, oh, your manuscript is amazing, um, uh, it's a beautiful um, uh, piece of scholarship, and if we get the money, we are going to publish it. Uh, so, uh, I don't know uh, the percentage, uh, but I would guess, uh, and I think that this guess is pretty much informed guess, that 90% of uh, academic output in Croatia is subsidized. Um, uh, so, um, uh, we can make um, uh, a very good um, uh, general picture out of the data uh, that we can get um, uh, from, these, um, uh, from this analyze. So, uh, the Ministry of Science, um, uh, from, um, uh, we have the data uh, for uh, five years here. Uh, you have the total number of subsidizes, which includes bo both books. So here is the number of books which were published um, um, uh, uh, by the money of the uh, Ministry of uh, Science. Uh, uh, this money is sometimes sufficient to cover all the production costs. Sometimes this is the half of production costs, you know, but this is the number of books, and this is the number of uh, journals um, uh, which are published by the uh, subsidies and uh, here is the amount it's a really big money you know um, uh, so it's um, the ball is um, uh, uh, for all of you uh, that you can compare and understand the number in euros and uh, I would say uh, for, 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 for six years I would say it's really big money and the model is that you apply a book and every single book gets the money so um, uh, that's not the money which is um, uh, in infrastructure, but in every single um, uh, project, which I think is, is, is wrong, you know, um, uh, but that's um, uh, for, 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 for another discussion. Uh, I did also analyze um, uh, for one year um, uh, subsidies of the Ministry of Culture in Croatia. Uh, here are the programs, um, uh, you can read them. So these are uh, different events related to books, like book fairs. Um, uh, these are purchases for public libraries, for public libraries, okay. Um, uh, then um, uh, support for literary work. Uh, so if you are um, uh, an author, uh, you can apply for your project and you'll get some money. Uh, uh, this is, um, uh, I would say, 60 euros uh, for EPUB conversion. Uh, so if you want to convert your printed book to EPUB, uh, the Ministry of Culture will give you 60 euros to do, to do this. Uh, subsidies for publishers um, are really subsidies for books. And here is the number of, pro of uh, programs and titles. Uh, bookseller events, um, uh, like presentation of books, uh, like some smaller um, uh, book, um, uh, book fairs, and translations. Uh, so if there is a book published in Croatia, uh, and you make, uh, in Croatian language, and you make an agreement with foreign publisher, then the Ministry of Culture can support the translation into foreign language. And that's the, that's the money and number of programs. So um, uh, when you add 
this money uh, to the money of um, uh, Ministry of Science. Uh, in 2016, we spent uh, this money uh, for book publishing in Croatia. So um, uh, seemingly the publishing should be lucrative business in Croatia because there's a lot of budget money. And um, uh, if we uh, divide this number with the number of books uh, published in this year, then it seems that in Croatia, um, uh, budget money participated with this amount in every single book, which is, which is good. And uh, which just shows uh, the general picture of uh, publishing business in, 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 in Croatia. Is it true that without public support, um, uh, the publishing would die in Croatia, as some of our association like to say, or it's not true? I'm not going to argue with this, but what I want to say is that the publishing is a business of status in Croatia, worthy of, uh, worthy of money. And here is an average salary in Croatia, just to compare, uh, just to compare, um, uh, uh, just to compare um, uh, with this amount. Uh, more data. Uh, about the distribution of subsidies. Uh, so what makes uh, lucrative publishing fields? Humanities, uh, with the number of programs, uh, 1,279. Social sciences, so uh, if someone says, and you can also, uh, I don't know um, uh, um, if in, in Lithuania or Slovenia, um, uh, that all are just about, uh, everything, everything's just about STEM, you know, because uh, some uh, um, uh, educational policies in, in Croatia are really promoting STEM, um, uh, STEM field in education. But when you see these numbers then um, uh, in book publishing, you know, uh, here are technical uh, biomedicines, natural sciences, 197 books uh, with thematics of physics, mathematics, you know, uh, biotechnics, arts, arts, 40 books, but um, uh, there is Ministry of Culture um, uh, for arts if they want, okay. And uh, interdisciplinary sciences, you know, a growing field in Croatia, so, uh, yeah. Uh, who are academic publishing publishers? So, uh, institutions, uh, institutions, uh, blue are companies, uh, and um, uh, the gray are societies. Institutions meaning um, like universities, faculties, you know, uh, private companies, and societies would be the society of uh, chemical engineering or or or, or things uh, things like that. So. Um, uh, here is um, for total subsidies, um, uh, here is for books, and here is for, for journals. So um, uh, you see that um, uh, here um, uh, private companies participate a lot uh, when we speak about books, and we speak um, uh, about journals as well, almost half-half. You know, so almost half-half is uh, public and, and, and uh, private, um, uh, private enterprise. Uh, the most prolific publishers, uh, then you see um, uh, uh, private publisher, then Creation Academy of Arts and Sciences, um, uh, then again private publisher, then Creation Institute for History, then Faculty of, uh, Faculty of Philosophy in Faculty of Humanities and Arts in Zagreb, which is the biggest among us, you know, and uh, perhaps far away in many other things. Then a private company, which, my, which was, uh, well, my first employer, I spent there six years, uh, Školska Knjiga in Zagreb, and some others. Uh, when we speak uh, top winners about books, then you have uh, private company, private company, then um, uh, Hrvatska Sveučilišna Nakada, which would be Croatian academic publisher, uh, which is a publishing company of University of Zagreb. I'll, I'll explain a little bit um, uh, later about this company. <laughs> then again, Školska Knjiga, then public um, uh, institute, Hrvatski institute za poli. Okay, then so you, you see that the um, uh, private companies um, uh, are really getting a lot of public money to publish academic books. Okay. Uh, and top winners regarding journal, then we have um, a different um, uh, story. Uh, mostly, um, um, uh, uh, mostly educational institutions are engaged in, in uh, uh, this part of uh, academic uh, publishing in Croatia. And where are academic publishers in Croatia? Again, uh, somewhere, uh, someone from Maribor is here, if I, if I noticed. Uh, so uh, this is Zagreb. Uh, this is Zagreb, and here are we. Uh, here is my home university in Osijek, you know. 
uh, I live in Zagreb, but I teach in Osijek, so I have a very, very good um, uh, overview and, and, and knowledge about, and I also mean in, in excellent connections with colleagues in, in, in Rijeka and in Zadar, I know what they are doing, you know, but they are, that, that's, 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 the, that's the concentration of, of publishers, you know, like um, uh, London Grub Street or something like this. Um, uh, a few centuries ago, so all the and and, and stationers company who uh, I think had this um, um, uh, rule that all the publishers should be concentrated in, in one or two streets um, uh, of London. So now we have the same situation in in, in Croatia that everything is um, uh, really concentrated, in the, which is normal uh, because that's publishing business. You know, um, uh, publishing business goes where people are or where 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 urbanization is and 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 when. Okay. Uh, so, uh, when um, uh, we look at the structure of academic um, uh, publishing um, uh, companies in Croatia, um, uh, uh, as, you, as you noticed from this analysis, we have academic and scientific organizations like universities, faculties, and so on. Um, uh, we have some um, uh, public institutions with special status, like Croatian Academic, uh, academic Arts and Sciences, uh, Lexicographic Institute, and um, uh, Matica Hrvatska, which are all should I? Yes. Okay, thank you. Okay, uh, yeah, I'm sorry. Uh, I'm sorry, I have this habit to walk a lot. Um, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. Uh, yeah. uh, which are um, uh, institutions of special status um, uh, paid uh, to do the research and to publish the research? Uh, and as I mentioned, um, uh, Croatian University Press, which was established in 1992 uh, as a publishing house of the University of Zagreb, but it's, it's rather fully independent. Um, it has a director, um, uh, and um, uh, there is um, a sort of advisory board of um, um, uh, university professors, but they are really a sort of advisors. Company is um, uh, uh, fully independent in decisions. Um, uh, they publish some uh, 40 books, uh, 40 books per year, and uh, later I mentioned um, our principle is uh, looking for strategical partners and um, uh, books, um, a book about publishing uh, inside the book publishing um, uh, written by Angus was published in uh, co-publishing um, uh, of uh, my university and and the uh, Hrvatska Sveučilišna nakladna. Okay. Uh, heritage institutions and uh, commercial um, uh, private publishers like Školska knjiga, Naklada Ljevak um, and many, many others. And uh, as I told at the beginning, uh, I would estimate, perhaps I'm wrong, uh, but I would roughly estimate that almost 90% um, um, uh, is um, uh, of academic um, uh, books in Croatia and academic journals, of course, um, uh, is published um, uh, uh, following this supplied uh, side um, uh, model of of uh, publishing, okay, uh, that's um, uh, that's the um, uh, uh, very general uh, picture. Uh, now, few words about publishing at uh, my university, uh, University of Osijek. Um, uh, there are uh, 17 departments um, uh, of the university. Uh, formally, we have a publishing committee. Uh, this publishing committee should make a publishing plan um, uh, for every year. Uh, it should um, uh, approve proposals um, uh, for textbooks and other, um, uh, and uh, it should uh, prepare reports and, and evaluation. Um, in reality, um, they don't do um, uh, this job. So, um, uh, in reality, uh, it should be the next step. Um, uh, all uh, this, what is written here, is done at the uh, faculties. You know, so the, the, there is no any. Um, uh, what is what is obligatory is if you have university textbook to send it uh, to the committee for the approval, uh, but it goes um, uh, automatically. Uh, uh, another problem is concerned uh, again um, um, about um, uh, data analysis. Uh, the last report report um, I have is. Um, uh, already three years old, and um, it consists of incomplete data because um, uh, it's not true that only six books are published this year. So um, uh, this report is um, uh, compiled out of available data for rector's office, and they didn't receive data for these guys, uh, for these guys here. Why I'm telling this? Um, uh, because um, uh, as I told at the beginning, um, uh, we are a little bit guerrilla publishing, and no one is uh, considered considering publishing a serious activity which really uh, deserves some um, uh, some uh, some efforts what is good um, uh, that um, uh, 
I think last year uh, there is a, a new database of all the public not of all, uh, but the database um, uh, that, should inc that should incorporate all the publications uh, from the university, but it's in the process of building. Uh, if I understood you well, uh, these publications will be available uh, later on? Okay, so then I'm, I'm, I'm not going to open anything. Um, uh, the links are here and, and uh, uh, you can uh, access it and um, uh, check it later on. Uh, so, um, uh, if we just see um, uh, who are the most um, uh, active faculties, uh, the red one is um, uh, my faculty, so the Faculty of uh, Humanities and Social Sciences. Um, uh, regarding um, uh, uh, regarding um, uh, uh, grants of the uh, Ministry of Science, so um, uh, we always apply with the um, uh, hugest number um, uh, of title. Uh, how it looks at my university, we also have publishing committee. Uh, I'm the head of the, of the publishing committee, but we are really committee um, uh, consisted of professors. So we are not even paid um, uh, for this job, you know. We are doing it as a something for, 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 our, uh, for our faculty. Yeah. For good, I don't know for what, uh, okay. Uh, in 2012, um, uh, we published um, new directives and, and, and guidelines um, uh, for, for um, uh, publishing. Uh, and uh, the only thing we wanted is to introduce some standardized procedures and, and documentation for, for publishing, you know, and then organization, organization, and again, organization is what we are, what we are, doing, um, uh, what we are doing right now. Uh, and I think that's uh, the, 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 the basic principle. Um, uh, to do it in a, in a, in a, in a better way, um, uh, um, uh, we insist on, on strategic partnerships, in fact. Um, uh, so uh, we ask companies who are able to do um, a job, um, a job for us. Uh, we do a lot of co-publications with uh, Croatian commercial publishers and um, other academic publishers because um, it's um, uh, much easier. Then they do distributions for us uh, because um, uh, Arunas was speaking about marketing and distribution. We are not doing marketing and distribution because there is no one, um, uh, no one who should do marketing and distribution. We are doing production. We are organizing production, and 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 um, uh, in fact, um, uh, that's um, uh, that's all. Okay, uh, and. Uh, well, uh, what would be academic publishing at my universities? So the very simple definition would be that it's service for um, uh, employees. Um, uh, no one would come to us and pay five thousand um, uh, pounds uh, uh, to to publish uh, to publish a uh, uh, book. So we don't have this uh, social status of UCL. <laughs> Uh, to, to ask for such money. Uh, what we publish, um, uh, our core publications are of course academic um, uh, monographs and uh, university uh, textbooks. Then academic journals, um, uh, but they all have their independent boards. Um, uh, we offer um, uh, production assistance to them. Uh, other things are important for the university and for the faculty. That's something that will always be at the publishing activities of the, of the universities. No one else is going to do this. So different proceedings, um, uh, program guides and things. And uh, I'll explain later on what I consider under the short run digital print of the, of the university. And for students, we publish some of their journals, uh, we publish some of their monographs. There is a beautiful monograph, students um, uh, completely produced on 100 years of big war. Um, uh, and it's so serious, it's so nice. They were very satisfied. So that's also something that no one would do except us, you know. So um, uh, promoting um, uh, student activities, I consider, would be also important, important part. Uh, I don't have organizational structure, uh, but I wanted to show you a uh, publishing chain. Uh, how, do we, how, do, how, do we, how do we publish? So, as I told you, we introduce uh, new guidelines um, and directives. So, we accept um, uh, manuscripts uh, till November. Uh, together with manuscripts, we ask authors um, uh, to uh, propose reviewers uh, to submit um, a statement that the manuscript is completed. So no, um, uh, like in any company, uh, and we also ask um, uh, the statement on copyright clearance. Uh, we prepare all this for the council meeting, this big council meeting every university has and faculty has of the university, and only council accept publishing plan to 
together with the reviewers. And only after that uh, we do uh, peer review. So um, uh, that's, that's this exclamation mark because in normal publishing chain you would do uh, review at the very beginning uh, before deciding whether you are going to include it in, in a publishing plan uh, or not. Then we do corrections and so on, and in May we apply for the subsidy. Okay? Uh, then we wait for the subsidy. Uh, decision goes in October, payment goes in December, uh, January, and then we go um, uh, to, to, to production. Uh, of course, always with a strategic partner. What do we do when the books are printed? We store it in a room, simple room at, 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 at our university. Okay. <laughs> 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 yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. We have a beauti beautiful room which is like... Uh, 20 square meters, full of books, you know, when you get there, then, then it's, a, it's an empire of all books, unsold books. Uh, so Stockroom at FFOS, uh, we do direct sale, we do direct sale, when, when, professor, when professor sends his student to buy a book, then, then we do direct sale, of course. <laughs> Uh, but we also we also uh, use our partners um, uh, to sell books for us, and that's 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 the only way to sell um, uh, to sell books um, uh, uh, we produce. Sometimes, if it's urgent case, then we don't apply, but we go to production on our on our own costs. Um, uh, who is paying? Um, uh, as I told you, um, uh, we really um, uh, try to uh, produce um, academic monographs and and and. Uh, uh, university textbooks by public money, uh, but university is, uh, not university, my faculty is um, uh, willing uh, to pay. Uh, for example, if there is an urgent case of tenure and professor needs a um, uh, monograph, uh, then we do something that I called um, instant uh, short-run digital press uh, publishing, you know. So uh, we would publish a book in less than a month um, uh, and we would publish 10 copies and we would pay for this, uh, just to make a sort of, uh, um, uh, one of the very important moments in publishing at my university is n now is uh, building trust, you know. So um, um, uh, it's extremely important to show to professors that um, uh, uh, we can do it better for them. Um, uh, so that's, that's I think, um, uh, Arunas, what you, what you also are doing with these uh, Christmas cards. So we are here, we know how to do the job, you know, and we, we, we'll, we'll help you um, uh, to, do, to do this job. Uh, what you've done is uh, just in front of us. I'm also thinking um, uh, you are good spirit of the academia, academic publishing here, uh, but I, I, I'm also thinking, you know, that um, uh, perhaps in two or four years, um, uh, we'll have also vice rector or rector who is going to understand, you know, that uh, the, it is good for the university, for the visibility, for the ranking of university, it's good. You know, it's good, it's, it's almost uh, necessary um, uh, to put it um, on, on, on bigger level. We pay everything for our students um, uh, because that's, that's part. Um, uh, and we give them a lot of editorial freedom and they feel good. And it's worthy, you know, when, when, when you see them happy, feeling good, um, uh, uh, having their own publication in, in hands, it, 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 it's, it's worthy. Uh, whatever is of uh, special interest for institution, and if there are any, 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 any other um, uh, urgent, uh, urgent cases, then we, uh, we also do this um, uh, uh, publishing. Uh, digital challenge. Um, uh, we completely modify workflow uh, so that um, uh, every production could go um, uh, to print and, and, and online um, uh, as well. Uh, we do digitiz digitization of um, uh, old publications at the university. Uh, that's student work, uh, so they do it as a part of their um, um, uh, teaching. Um, uh, we are building a new platform for open access monographs, uh, but students are building this platform, you know, also as a part of their engagement. Um, uh, and um, uh, in fact, it's not um, uh, sure that it's going to work, you know, but we have alternatives, you know. Uh, and I have to mention um, uh, two such platforms which are really miles ahead of us. Uh, I mentioned Faculty of Humanities and Social Science in Zagreb. They have um, uh, such a platform. By it's, it, it, it's headed by the, by the library. Am I right? I think it's headed by the library. Okay. Uh, 
And University of Zadar, um, uh, our friends from the University of Zadar have more press, which is the press of the seas. Uh, and uh, they are also publishing everything in open access, uh, journals and monographs, um, a very nice project. But it was developed by the Department of Information Sciences, and now it's run by the publishing, uh, by the publishing committee at the, at the university. We all use OJS, and uh, we have this famous, famous Herchak, um, now where our um, uh, journal articles are available online, but it's not, um, it's not publishing tool, it's, it's a repository once when you publish. You store it, you store it in Herchak. Yeah, uh, the last thing I want to mention is that we have a um, uh, master in publishing at the university, <laughs> which is now uh, four years old. Um, uh, here is the structure of publishing program. Why I'm mentioning this one? Because uh, we really try um, uh, to give students as much work as possible, you know. So um, uh, whatever we do in publishing at our university, um, uh, I've mentioned inside book publishing, um, uh, which is uh, uh, classical textbooks in publishing um, uh, all around the world. Um, uh, the author is here, and uh, Angus remembers the process. Uh, I have a students who combine publishing and uh, English language translation. So they did translation. We were on hotline with Angus, you know, what means... Uh, I don't know what was what was the problem with, with terminology. Um, uh, they were the editors, and they blew up the job. Of course, you know it was completely completely. Um, uh, this, but that was the, that was that was the sense. You know, if you have to make mistake now, make mistake at the, at the during the study program. We'll correct the mistake. Um, we'll show you how to do this, and that was uh, that was um, uh, amazing, uh, amazing um, experience. Um, they, they also do um, uh, publishing job in some local and national institutions. They have their own publishing projects. Um, uh, so, uh, uh, to 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 uh, make a quick conclusion. Uh, Publishing is uh, in the process of development. Uh, we know what to do. Um, uh, we need a much more goodwill um, uh, from the university um, uh, management. And meanwhile, um, uh, we are trying to uh, make our students uh, good publishers uh, in the future. Uh, here are just the sources uh, for a few data I presented here. Uh, thanks uh, again for giving me an opportunity to share our small experiences with such distinguished Thank you. And again, we have time for one question. She's gone. Recreatia. Okay, I come from Croatia, from University of Zagreb and Faculty of Humanities. And one thing I wanted to ask you about is the uh, peer review process uh, with books. Uh, because one thing that we are facing now, one of the main challenges, is when we want to get our books, and I guess it is the similar with your institution, and in Slovenia maybe, uh, when we want to get them more visible in the European context, one of the main requirements is to get this process of peer review very standardized and described in details. Of course, all our books are peer reviewed, but this process is not really as uh, standardized as with journals, especially for conference proceedings and edited books. So uh, do you think something to do something about that, to standardize that, and also what are your, uh, where do you go from there? Yeah, OK. I can I can answer you using using this one. Yeah, you're completely um, uh, right. Uh, regarding journals, um, everything is clear right now. We have standardized procedures, um, and we are part of uh, uh, European research um, uh, area. Um, uh, but uh, uh, there are few reasons for review in Croatia. Uh, very important reason is if you um, now want to get the subsidy from the Ministry of Science, you need two reviews. And many, many academic books are reviewed only because of the subsidy. In practice, um, uh, the author is going to ask two friends to make a review for him, which is okay, which is good, you know. Uh, if the author is serious guy, if the reviewers are serious guys, if they know um, now what 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 they are doing, you know, then 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 it could be good, you know. But not all the people are good willing, you know. And sometimes really you can publish um, uh, very 
uh, badly um, uh, written texts um, uh, uh, according to this. Uh, I think um, uh, that in fact um, uh, the review process was always process of um, uh, evaluation in, 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 in publishing, you know. Um, uh, the publisher is investing perhaps not money, uh, if there is a subsidy, but again, uh, some money, some time, and uh, a reasonable publisher is not going to invest time and money in, in, in bad manuscripts. So the review is needed um, uh, for, 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 for a publisher when we speak um, about book. Uh, but when we speak about conference proceedings, um, uh, when we speak all about this uh, gray zone, um, uh, if I may call it, uh, if you agree with me, gray zone publishing, uh, and we are all um, uh, professors, we are all waiting for our tenure, you know, and you know so many of... Uh, Suspicious proceedings are in web of science, you know, and and then you're really doing hard um, uh, to publish a good article, and then you see um, uh, that that it's possible to have a proceeding, um, uh, five five pages proceeding, and that it's A1, you know, and it is bring a lot of points if you want to be um, a university professor. Yeah, then it it it, it, it it's 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 a little bit um, uh, disappointing. Uh, the only the only um, uh, solution I see um, uh, is um, uh, standards guidelines um, uh, ethical standards and guidelines which would be um, uh, common for the European research area um, uh, but 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 um, uh, you know uh, then all the private companies who are publishing databases should be also willing to to employ such standards uh, thank you so we will stop ah. I wish only to add something. Uh, last year, our University of Maribor signed with University of Split the co university agreement on publishing activities and concrete agreement with Faculty of Law of University of Split. Until now, we have published uh, two scientific books for University of Split. And my suggestion is that we, in the near future, future think about it perhaps on some common uh, publishing open access platform. Uh, for this region, we have many advantages. We understand each other, we know each other because of our past uh, history, relationships. So we let's, let's think about it. Just one, one you, sentence. You want, yeah. Just one sentence, all the record. Uh, I think that we are all too small to have um, uh, our particular publishing enterprises. You know, so I completely agree. Um, uh, I would be very happy that we have a joint um, uh, publishing enterprise, for example, of all uh, universities in Croatia. Uh, but then again, um, um, uh, um, uh, for ranking, the university needs uh, visibility on their own pages. You know, so uh, well, uh, a lot of a lot of a lot of strategic interest. But yeah, that's exactly what Miha and, and, and me and, um, and the Runyas and um, uh, a lot of uh, our colleagues from Central and, and, and uh, if we are Central Europe, I hope we are, and then uh, East Europe, whatever you want. Um, uh, what we are discussing for the last five or ten years, uh, we have some joint projects. Um, uh, we really are thinking that um, uh, it would be much better and uh, much more fruitful um, uh, to, 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 to work together in all, in all senses. Yeah, we are too small to, to do things. No, just one by one. Oh. Okay, thank you, Zoran. Uh, and we are moving back to UK again. Our next speaker is Professor Angus Phillips, who is professor at Oxford Brookes University and director of the Center for uh, uh, International Center for Publishing, Publishing yep. yeah, and he is also editor in chief of Logos, which is the main European journal for publishing studies. And if I may use five seconds for PR, yes, he's also one of the two editors of the Handbook of Publishing, which was just published by Oxford University Press, and which is actually the first big publication which put publishing studies on and the Mihar map. Two chapters oh. <laughs> the floor is yours. Uh, Dobadan, hello everybody. It's nice to be in Ljubljana and congratulations to the university on your 100th anniversary. I wish you another many hundreds of years success in the future. 
Um, as Miha says, at the Centre for Publishing in Oxford, we teach publishing at both undergraduate and postgraduate level, and we write books and articles about publishing. Mm -hmm. And Oxford's quite a publishing centre. There are lots of global publishing companies in Oxford, and we're very close to London as well. Um, in terms of personal connection with the university presses, I used to work at Oxford University Press as a trade editor, um, and I'm also an author with them as well. Um, I worked out that about 150 of our former students now work at AUP in Oxford, so we've got a good track record of employment at university presses as well. Uh, my connection with Princeton University Press is that I'm on the, International Advi the European Advisory Board for Princeton University Press, uh, which has an office uh, just north of Oxford for its European operations. Um, so I know a bit about university presses. I'm going to talk today about the broader context of university presses within academic publishing, which I hope complements what people have said so far. Um, I'm going to talk a bit um, in broad terms about what's happening in academic publishing and the place of university presses, what should be their mission, um, and what's happening with the future of university presses. I think there's quite exciting time at the moment. There are a lot of new presses starting in the UK, um, and open access is obviously bringing fresh opportunities um, in this sector of publishing. Uh, so what is academic publishing? Well, we can divide it into three broad categories. Firstly, journals, uh, then books, um, research monographs, <coughs> and also uh, textbooks as well. So I'm going to talk a little bit about each of these categories. Uh, journals publishing, if you look at where the two big university presses in the UK, um, CUP and AUP, fit in terms of the number of journal, journals published. They are quite small by comparison. I think they're sort of 13th and 14th in the list. I've missed out some of the publishers in the middle on this diagram. So you've got companies like Springer Nature, Elsevier, the big heavyweight, Wiley, big heavyweights in this area of publishing journals. And uh, certainly this area of publishing favours scale. You have high fixed costs um, if you're going to have a really good platform um, that can be accessed all around the world. There are high costs around that. I think Elsevier spent £6 million developing Science Direct originally um, and must have spent many, many more millions in, in the meantime. And they've added in book content as well to the journal content there as well. So there are high fixed costs around journal publishing, but once you surpass those high fixed costs, it then becomes quite profitable. Um, hence, look, if you look at the company results of some of those big publishers, um, hence some of the debate about open access that we don't need to go into now. Um, Obviously, the expenditure on journals tends to dominate library budgets and tends to squeeze out um, the budgets for books, and that's certainly a common trend um, in the UK. The figures for UK journals publishers, they're still getting about three quarters of their income from subscriptions, um, and only just up to about 10% from open access charges at the moment, and those figures from 2017. As we all know, the journal has gone digital um, and uh, printing has shifted to users. So I f I'm really interested in journal article. I tend to print it out and read it on the train. Um, so the printing has shifted in that direction. And there are very few print-only journals now. Um, we all know about the growth of open access and about 30% of articles are now OA. Um, there are lots of different models um, around journals publishing, constant experimentation um, and uh, we heard from UCL about the mega journal concept, so Public Library of Science was one of the first um, in that area to have a really big journal and to uh, largely assess articles by the methodology and allow more open peer review um, once an article is published. We've also got the cascade concept, so if you've got a top ranked journal like Nature, um, where you're turning away most of your submissions, um, can you reuse the peer review in some way? So with the cascade concept, you have a kind of tier of journals, so you might be able to reuse the peer review um, for a lower ranked journal within the same stable. And that's produced economies around the peer review system. Um, quite an interesting development as well. You've got sponsorship model where universities might get together to start up a new journal. And obviously, um, the, the only game in town now is AOA. If you're going to start a new journal, it's going to be open access. Um, it's a kind of now new arms race worldwide with uh, America and China um, uh, with massive research budgets and China's now overtaken 
Um, in the latest figures I've seen in terms of the output of research papers, just overtaking the states. In terms of citations, the states is still way ahead, but obviously China has got an ambition to catch up with those on that uh, metric as well. There are about 33,000 peer-reviewed journals. Um, again, the latest figures from STM that I've seen in the English language, and about 2.5 million new articles each year. The number of articles tends to go up with the number of researchers as that grows, and the kind of arrival of China as a major research player has got huge implications for the journals market over the next few years, what China does about open access. Um, their ambition, say five or six years ago, was to get their researchers publishing in international top-ranked journals. They then decided, um, the government, or the government, I should say, decided that the strategy should be more to try and develop their own major international journals um, from China, and there's a major impetus behind that at the moment. So watch this space. I think uh, more developments coming soon. Um, in terms of book publishing, as I've said just now, library budgets tend to get squeezed by expenditure on journals. Um, publishers over the last few years have, hard to find, have found it hard to make up in digital terms the revenue um, they have lost as print sales have gone down. Um, but I was in OUP last week and they said that's starting to um, balance out a bit more now. Um, so digital sales are definitely increasing as print continues to fall in terms of importance. There's been big concern in the market about the level of e-book prices. I'm sure you're aware of that. Um, publishers have seen the shift towards digital and they've put, uh, put some really quite high e-book prices into the market which have been unpopular. Um, and so that's, that's a kind of constant dynamic. We heard also um, from other people about how OA is coming to books now. Um, our research council, our research exercise has not yet mandated that, but it may do um, for the research exercise the one after next. Um, so that's going to be a big change. Um, we know from journals that um, there is money in STM for gold model of open access, but there's less money in the humanities for that kind of model. So green is more common model in the humanities, um, perhaps with some kind of embargo. But if the embargo disappears, as it is likely to, then um, it will that model survive? We'll have to see um, for publish. It may really impact publishers quite badly. So we'll see, we'll see what happens in that area as well. Um, and obviously, the half-life of humanities journal article or book is really quite long. Um, Monographs in the UK, well, we said the monograph was dead. The print runs were going down and down and down, and um, nobody was reading them. There were a few copies going into libraries, um, and as Jamie said, um, they, they're selling about 200 copies um, in print. That's the norm, really, for a monograph sale now. Um, so, the, so the monograph's disappearing, but no, the research was that as the print runs were falling, the number of titles increased. So over a over a period 2004 to 2013, monograph production from those four top um, academic publishers actually doubled in that time. So they were making up with title reduction, as, um, which is an old publishing trick, is to publish more books when you're, they're not selling quite so well. Um, and what has supported that? Well, the reduction in costs um, and the use of print-on-demand digital printing uh, there is a large academic publisher now that does not hold stock of any of their book titles. They just print purely to order now. Um, so that will be the future of this kind of book publishing. Um, and uh, there have been a reduction in costs around editorial um, and uh, not having to invest in stock in the same way has reduced cost as well. But the model is also to take those books into online platforms. So if you take a publisher like OUP, all their monographs will be published into their Oxford Scholarship online platform. And um, what's interesting about this is that it's a group model as well. They'll take in titles from other university presses. So for example, Liverpool University Press, Princeton University Press, they, um, they build in to the model that they're accepting titles from other publishers through an agreement. Um, so actually those titles are getting good visibility um, through that kind of service like Oxford Scholarship Online which obviously is a subscription service in the same way that journal articles um, through subscription services. Uh, textbooks, um, as Zoran mentioned I'm author of Inside Book Publishing which is a, which is a textbook and uh, 
It's, uh, it was kind of accidental textbook. Um, it wasn't originally designed as one, but it's become one. And so a lot of smaller presses have these accidental textbooks that work well in the textbook market. But globally, um, for example, if you look at the US, there are lots of there are a few big players there. We've got Cengage is just about to merge with McGraw-Hill, which will increase the consolidation in the textbook market. Um, concerns about the high prices that students have to pay for textbooks. And uh, so the publishers are now trying to come up with new models. Rental has really affected them in the States, the, and the increasing use of a rental model. Um, Jamie mentioned secondhand as well. That affects sales in the textbook market. Um, if I ask my students, they still prefer print. Um, but for our university library, it may be more efficient to uh, um, have access to the ebook version um, from the, the economic side of things. Um, so a lot of consolidation in this market and there are kind of inclusive access models now where you might, if you're paying for your education, you might get the textbooks included in the price of your university fees. For example, in America, that's, that's a growing model. Um, Cengage have just thrown a curveball into the textbook market with um, a kind of one-off price which will get you access to all the textbooks you need. Um, at Cengage Unlimited. So all you can eat access is how it's described. Um, and so that could really affect the textbook market as well. Will the competitors have to follow such a uh, new model? Other markets for university presses? Well, Princeton, uh, which I know well, they do quite a lot of in the sort of academic trade space. So they've got a really good economics list, which has some trade sale. They've got natural history list, which is probably purely mostly trade um, from that point of view. So some of the university presses, especially in America, operate in that space um, around academic trade. My new book, Oxford Handbook, a publishing sort of reference market. Um, you've got uh, the mission of some of the university's presses is more broadly around education. So for example, um, they might be publishing for the schools market, um, which could be quite lucrative. For Oxford University Press, their most lucrative ever publishing over a long period of time was for the English language teaching market, where they had courses selling millions of copies, and that generated huge sales over, over a number of years. Um, and of course, if you can develop a global presence um, with branches in other countries, distribution networks in other countries, and start to um, tap into other markets, that sometimes leads to local publishing. So for example, in India, Oxford University Press have their own branch with a local academic publishing program. Um, so the quite interesting developments happen around those sorts of things. Um, so I, this is sort of back of the envelope calculation, but I reckon AUP and CEP have got over 90% of the uh, sales uh, for university presses in the UK. Um, AUP, the latest figures I saw, they're approaching, uh, well, at, at over £800 million in total. Um, CUP is that bit smaller. If you then, then there's a huge gap before you start to encounter other presses like Edinburgh University Press, EUP, their sales are about three million pounds. Similar, I think, for Liverpool University Press. Um, the smaller presses are probably not making a contribution to the university in the way that the larger ones, those two larger ones are, if they're in surplus. Um, and they're aiming for sustainability and I know Edinburgh has the opportunity to reinvest any surplus it makes into its publishing programme because it's good for the brand of the university to, to have the um, university press doing that. Um, obviously, brand is huge in this market. Um, and uh, oh, we've gone the same thing again. OK. <laughs> uh, Obviously, for your career, to be published by one of the top university presses is really good, and that's, there's a connection with the brand of the university as well, and UCL's obviously got a really good brand in, in this market, which is why their press is doing well. Um, smaller presses may specialise around subjects that are important or um, have got a reputation at their own university, and that can really have a good interaction between the, the subject to the university and the publishing programme. Um, and but it's not going to do your career any harm to have a monograph published by Oxford or Cambridge University Press, and that is still um, still a truth in the um, academic market. The mission um, when I started at AUP, it had nothing to do with the university. 
and the university didn't want to know it. And then when it started making money, suddenly it became a university department. Um, and there's quite a close relationship there now between the press and the university. The AUP P mission, it's to support the university's objective of excellence in research, scholarship and education. So that broader mention of education allows it to publish in the schools market, um, children's publishing and a variety of trade, um, trade lists as well. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about Liverpool University Press. Um, and so I thought I'd put their mission up there which in mentions culture as well um, as part of the mission, which I think is quite interesting to have that in the mission. Now, I don't know if you can have a mission statement for your university press, but it, I'd be interested to see it when you've written it, um, because it's quite interesting to compare um, the mission statements. And I think that mention of culture is quite interesting from the perspective of Liverpool. Um, so I know a little bit about Liverpool University Press. I was friends with the former chair of it, and so I followed its... It was in a bad way at one point, um, and uh, it, we have the research exercise every seven years in the UK, and it tended to clog up with titles from the university as academics wanted to get a book published quickly. In term, to, They've only just finished it, and the exercise is coming up, and they need to have it published quickly. So it tended to get clogged up in that kind of cycle. Um, so very much supply-led publishing that Zoran was talking about um, was a problem for the press. They had high levels of stock with not proper, no proper financial management, and it was very much the university um, academics driving what they wanted to get books through the press, and there wasn't the kind of editorial judgment that you need if you're going to have a proper uh, editorially-led uh, university press. And uh, so they had a new strategy. They sorted out the governance. Um, we established some degree of editorial independence from the university, which enabled them to make choices about what they published, um, rather than just being given a book and told you've got to get it out um, within a certain period. Um, they actually went back to their mission to think about what their setting points were, and they, in the, they decided to work around the city of Liverpool, its culture, its history, and things like that, to have a strong element of that within the university press. Um, they decided to avoid STM as being too expensive to get involved in that area, um, so concentrated more in the humanities area. Um, and they avoided professional publishing as well, where there's a lot of competition. So they had quite a selective approach to what they were going to publish. It wasn't just everything. Um, and uh, they decided they were going to become a cultural flagship for the city and the university, which was reflected in the journals they published, some of the titles they published, those kind of things. Uh, so I think that cultural aspect's been really important. And Liverpool's really had a big renaissance as a press and is one of the successful university presses in the UK now. Um, it sorted out its structure, what distribution mechanisms it used, established new relationships. As we saw, some of its books were going to AUP's online platform, so they weren't afraid of working with other university presses as part of their strategy. They start an expansion program, choosing what kind of books and journals they wanted to publish. They actually acquired some journal titles as well. Um, and uh, we were hearing about your open access textbook project. I think they were part of that as well. So they actually tried to make a name for themselves for innovation in the OA space, which uh, I think is important in today's university press market as well. Um, so I think the climate has changed for university presses. There are quite a few have opened and are opening in the UK. Um, and uh, certainly a university is looking at, do I have a cost-effective route for open access publication for my own um, academics and researchers? So that's a driving force. We know that OA can broaden the audience for research in terms of downloads, views and those kind of things. So it's good for the visibility of the university to have um, a press doing that kind of programme. Um, it's also good for early career researchers who may find it harder to publish in um, with some of the more established university presses and uh, so to have a route for them to publish uh, can be really important and uh, I mean I did I was asked for advice on the, st the startup of a university press in this area, but I'm not going to tell you which university, um, and uh, they were very keen to start with a printer, and I was saying, why do you want to start with a printer? Because the future is digital, and you don't need to have your own printer to be a university press. I mean, that's how originally university presses started, but um, that's quite an old-fashioned model. Um, and uh, you, probably the future of monographs is purely digital. 
um, which gives everyone an opportunity to publish in that space. If you get the editorial quality right, the peer review process right, um, make a name for yourselves with quality publishing. Open access textbooks, um, the jury's still out on quite what's going to happen with that area, but that's quite interesting uh, space for innovation as well. Um, and so we've got new presses starting, um, and I think you see those figures about the consolidation of textbook publishing, academic publishing, and, and universities, I think, it will, it, you know, we want to provide other routes for publication um, to make it easier more generally. Um, often presses start with the library, um, certainly in America that's the case, and obviously repositories are really important now. We've got one at our university. Um, and digital publication revolutionizes the whole of pub publishing now. You don't have to hold stock in the way um, that you would have had to before. You can just print to order. Um, open access, um, lots of opportunities for university presses to get involved. And many of them have low overheads. They're probably staffed by one or two people, these new university presses. So you don't need to have a, a large infrastructure necessary to start up. Um, so I just want to finish by saying lots of opportunities in publishing more generally, but also for university presses. Um, the digital print model, if you get that right, you can get your finances to work well. Um, you can distribute globally uh, now. There are distribution mechanisms where you can get a print book done, printed for you locally somewhere else in the world um, through someone like Ingram. And uh, if you collaborate with other people, you can develop innovations. And audio is something Princeton's getting interested in. Have you thought about the audio market in academic publishing? I haven't seen anyone do it. Uh, there's a lot of podcasting around now, but that's, that could be a really interesting space for university presses, I think, to get involved through podcasting. Um, AI, if you've got researchers working in the area of AI, huge contribution that they can make in the area of publishing as well. Um, in terms of uh, machine intelligence, looking at what is published and what kind of, um, you know, looking at the, the output of research and coming to conclusions through that. And uh, again, if you've got researchers in that area, that could provide some interesting uh, ways forward. So thank you very much for your attention. Thank you. Thank you. And just questions? Uh, are you dealing with audio books? The new trend is they, the people wish to hear the book, not the read anymore. Sorry, Do you deal with audio books? Are you publishing them? Uh, we're not a publisher ourselves directly. Um, yeah, sorry. Yeah, we're not a publisher ourselves directly, but audio is a hugely growing market in the UK uh, in more general publishing. But I think there's lots of opportunities. For example, I'm doing a podcast in China at the moment about, about publishing. Um, I think there are lots of opportunities for academics to get involved in this market. And it can lead to really quite interesting publishing projects because you can do books out of those podcasts and things like that. So I think that's quite interesting space for university presses to be getting into and if you want to highlight your re your key researchers um, then a podcast series might be quite a good way of doing that mm. that was really my thinking uh, if that makes sense okay thank you any more yeah. okay. this might be a bit of an elaboration on the audiobooks I myself listen to a lot of audiobooks but only in literature, not yeah, in yeah. academics, because it is very hard yeah. to just listen to something that is more mentally yeah. problematic, shall we say. Uh, what about, is there any project more in the sense of going one step ahead and doing, I don't know, uh, in, in such a way as this, so a payable, uh, just vid video book ish something yeah I mean uh, publishers have experimented with that and especially in the area of textbooks um, they've mm -hmm. 
but none of it has quite taken off in the way they thought it would maybe five or six years ago. Um, I mean, there were some quite interesting examples of kind of interactive textbooks with audio and video in there. Um, and then there was some retreat towards kind of more interactive PDFs with embedded audio and video rather than the kind of all singing or dancing things that you can create. Um, but I think for a major textbook, you've got to have online resources and that should probably um, include some videos these days as well. So, um, but it tends to be more marketing material. No one's actually reinvented the book as the, as the kind of what you're describing. Maybe there's an opportunity there as well, but it hasn't quite happened yet. Yeah, I think it's mostly because people, when they think of video, just think documentaries more than actually books. Yeah, yeah. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Uh, last year, one of my students arrived asking me why don't we um, uh, produce um, uh, audio textbooks. Yep. And my answer was uh, very traditional. Um, uh, look, um, uh, you need good equipment, um, uh, you need a good voice, um, uh, preferably some actor to read it for you. Um, uh, and uh, well, it, it, it's very expensive, you know, to produce um, uh, textbooks. And you know, we are a small university, not many people would buy this uh, audio textbook. And then she made the research. You know, um, uh, she used this um, uh, Google um, uh, Forms, you know, and uh, it appears um, uh, she has some two or uh, three hundred um, uh, interviews. It appeared that students would like their professors uh, to read them good night stories from their textbooks, you know. So they would be willing to listen, really, a sort of uh, good morning, good good night stories. So. And uh, I was really like uh, a little bit surprised, you know. So perhaps uh, there is a market for for audio audio textbooks. So yeah. just just a s small experience. Oh, so here's the runes. <laughs> Can I add some comment to audio books? Uh, recently, we published first our audio book. It is textbook uh, on rhetoric. Uh, so it was quite cheap because. Uh, we have a radio in Vilnius University, where radio have all the equipment for recording sound, and the author voiced over to all the text of this textbook. So it costs nothing for us, and we are trying now to, to earn some money on, on yeah. this growing market. <laughs> yeah. yeah, no, well, I think that's good, and but I think it's also got the potential for impact. If you want to be looking at the impact of the research from the university, then having an audio series that maybe is read, listened to by a more general market could be good. Sorry? Yes. Yeah. As an old-fashioned traditionalist, I would prefer students to know how to read too, so, but <laughs> never mind, there is one question up there. Um, hi, um, my, uh, I'm uh, the Secretary General of the Faculty of Law. And um, uh, it's a coincidence that I'm also in a startup, audibook.se. You can all look at it. And we actually did textbooks uh, at the law faculty. And one of our professors, Professor Kranz, he made uh, 28 hours of Roman law. So we have um, three publications. One was read by, um, uh, how do you say, um, faculty of arts student. One was done by him all the text in the book, and one was done by him with additional explanations. So um, it's already <laughs> two years now, we're selling the books. They're like renting for uh, four euros for eight days, and we just, um, two days ago, we uh, signed a contract with um, Association of Deaf um, and uh, Blind, and they have a uh, library of 5,000 uh, Audi books, and we will all um, put them on our uh, system. So it already has been done, and it's it's a big market, a growing market. So uh, good for you. Yeah. <laughs> As a comment, beware of copyrights because the Association of Deaf and Bli of Blind has a special, uh, yeah we, uh, yeah. A special, yeah, exception. And uh, uh, with all the other books, we did sign a special um, uh, contract. And usually the authors didn't give uh, the Audi 
um, uh, reproduction rights to the general publisher. So it's there with the authors. Uh, we go to the authors, we sign the contract, and then we okay. Uh, tape. Okay. Uh, any more questions? No. So we will. Uh, yeah. No. So we will take a coffee break now, and we continue at one o'clock in Slovenian language. Okay. <laughs> Thank you.